Ah, Power Rangers Turbo. The series that said, remember the first four years? Never mind. That and they thought the Lloyd Christmas bowl cut look from Dumb and Dumber was a thing. But back to the series washing away continuity, remember what happened in Power Rangers Zeo? Well, this show sure didn't. What happened to the Zeo powers? Well, Johnny Young Bosch said that there was supposed to be a fight with the Zeo powers, and the Power Rangers lost them in the movie, which apparently was filmed. Well, shucks, that didn't happen. Which is a shame because it would have made the first 20 minutes of the movie better than the Snorfest we got. Seriously, it's Divatox yelling and hunting for some ET-like wizard in the woods for 20 minutes. This is engaging the audience? Well, I already bought my ticket. Yeah, I already suckered me in. So all the while Turbo is going on, the Zeo powers and the Zeo Zords are still a thing. Oh, and Balkan Skull are there too. What happened to France? What happened to your secret mission? What happened with this? <laughs> Why didn't we follow through on the whole Zed and Rita returning thing? They were part of Zeo, and in Turbo, all we get is this. How do I get rid of the Power Rangers? What? The Power Rangers? <laughs> if I knew that, do you think I'd be lying here listening to this? And that was in the movie. In fact, the movie was the only thing leading up to Power Rangers Turbo. With Zeo, they had a marketing blitz. We had a story that carried on from Mighty Morphin to Alien to Zeo. We had vignettes previewing Zeo. But for Turbo, all we got was a movie. A boring, long, tedious movie. 55 minutes. It took this movie 55 minutes to get to any action scene. They could have had a fight when picking up Larago the wizard. There could have been a fight scene at the beach with the trade-off of Jason and Kimberly. Nope, it was all talk, 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 talk for 55 minutes. With the original movie, it was non-stop action. The plot was kind of <laughs> But at least the original movie kept you hooked. Now, as far as Turbo forgetting everything the past two incarnations and Power Rangers did, well, these are your directors and writers, so it's understandable. I will add that Maladar's design is awesome. There, I said a good thing about the movie. Saying good things about this series is hard to do. There were just so many bad decisions. The first, the choice of Sentai they adapted. Now I understand that they didn't have a choice in the matter. And I'm blaming Japan more than I'm blaming Saban for this choice. We went from dinosaurs to mythical creatures to ninja animals to Egyptian gods to Psy Cars. Not really exciting, is it? Oh, shut up. All right, it's not exciting unless it's done well. And to me, well, I don't even remember the names of the cars. I don't remember which car goes to which ranger without looking at the color scheme. At least with the others, you knew which Zord went with which ranger. Cars are a boring Zord. We also have to talk about the villains. Now, rumor has it that Zed and Rita were supposed to be the main villains of the series, and Divatox was to return later. But, yeah, that. Instead, we got Divatox all season. I know she was supposed to be a diva and over the top, and a pirate to boot. You'd think she would be interesting. She's not. She just yells a lot. I know Rita did the same thing, but she was goofy and fun to watch. And while King Mondo was kind of lame, he was at least interesting. Diva Tox is boring. By the way, what is it with her and Bob's during the first half of the season? Oh, and her motivation? She doesn't want to take over the world or the universe. Oh no, she's a pirate. Pirates don't do that. She is out for revenge because the Power Rangers ruined her wedding with Malagor. And then, for some reason, sometime later, she wants to take over the planet or something. I don't know. It's stupid. This is a stupid villain. The whole Balkan Skull thing was never explained either. They never left for France, and in fact, they were back on the police force in the movie, and then they returned to monkeys for the first half of the series. Now, I understand that Fox was working on a pilot for a Balkan Skull series, and couldn't have them around for the first half of the Turbo series. But at least follow through on the France part. 
That was a plausible explanation for them not being around. And again, I think a Balkan Skull series would have been awesome. As far as the Rangers themselves, well, the biggest part of the series is they switched out the entire main cast in the middle of it. Well, at the beginning, Rocky's actor left because he was either injured or wanted to start a dojo. But it's his fault we got stuck with Justin. Tommy and Kat's actors wanted to leave the series, but Adam and Tanya just left just because. And they didn't even want to leave. But before Tommy, Kat, Tanya, and Adam leave, Zordon and Alpha 5 left. Enter questions only girl, Demetria, and Alpha 6. Please, please, can't you just tell me what to do? How do I find the others? What about these fakes? Tommy, Tommy, you really don't get it, do you? Demetria is from Inquiris. Inquiris, like Inquire. She doesn't give answers, she asks questions. This is better, why? Demetria spends time answering questions with a question stirring a fight that people are in danger because of. This feels like more wasting time than anything. I think the producers understood that and they kind of laid off the questions only later in the series. The whole thing with Demetria was stupid. Now, I will admit that the introduction of Cassie, TJ, Carlos, and Ashley was interesting and added to the show a little, but Justin did not. Justin may not have been all that bad, but the fact that having a 12-year-old kid being a Power Rangers was annoying and really brought the show down. If we wanted kitty Power Rangers, well, make them Beetleborgs. The problem is Justin didn't have anyone his own age to play off of. He is a kid mixed with college kids now. That is until TJ, Cassie, Carlos, and Ashley came in. But yet again, this is pretty much Dipper trying to impress Wendy and her gang. It is not believable that he is not hanging out with kids his own age. So there's this disconnection because this kid isn't meshing well with the older rangers. This is why Beetleborgs works. It's because they are all kids and it doesn't have the older kids babysitting them. Now the ratings for this season was going downhill and the introduction of the four new rangers helped improve that. Now I'm going to disagree with Linkara with the decision of making random strangers we barely know into Power Rangers. That's kind of what Zordon did with the first group. Alpha just beamed up five teenagers with attitude and really, that is all that seems to qualify them for rangerhood. However, since the ratings weren't that great at the beginning, Power Rangers was given one more season, and then that was going to be it. To be honest, the reason why it took so long to get this review out, because I was digging and scratching trying to find something positive to say about this series. I found one thing, the final set of episodes. The one where Divatox's monsters managed to destroy the Zords and the Power Rangers weapons. Then she attacks the power chamber with an army of Piranatrons and defeat the Power Rangers. The worst Power Ranger villain is the one who defeats the Power Rangers. However, Divatox is then ordered to meet a greater evil who captured Zordon and she leaves. This is before she actually destroys the Power Rangers. The Power Rangers, with the exception of Justin, because we hate him, leave the Earth to help Zordon, ending Turbo with a to be continued in Power Rangers in space. The last battle was epic, and the best part of a really, really bad season. For some reason, Fox Kids was bent on keeping Power Rangers off Saturday mornings during Zeo and Turbo. And the only reason that Zeo aired on Saturday mornings was because the tick was temporarily cancelled. And Fox needed a replacement until Erie, Indiana came on. The same thing happened with Turbo after the tick was permanently cancelled. Fox Kids Afternoons was kind of weird in 97 as well. Spider-Man was the only cartoon in the afternoon airing alongside Power Rangers, Turbo, Beetleborgs, Metallics, and Goosebumps. That is until Life with Louie went to afternoons replacing Goosebumps. To be honest, the whole 97-98 season was a big mess. Not as bad as the years to follow, but still a mess. Plus, it didn't help that in the spring of 1997, a cartoon block would appear to change weekday afternoons 
forever. Plus, Turbo was battling new episodes of Pinky in the Brain on another block. Hmm. Maybe competition was starting to bring the heat to Fox Kids. Next time on the season finale of the History of Fox Kids.